following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! is the DallasCowboys.com Draft Show. Your war room for insider news and draft analysis from deep within the confines of Cowboys headquarters at the Star in Frisco. Well, look what they did. <laughs> they bought the old crusty scout out I can't. for the draft show here. How about that, guys? Let's Brian brought fun. us. Yeah, Brian brought us here. <laughs> Nick Harris, Aisha Morrison, uh, Bobby Belt, soon to be on his way. Bobby's got like a morning job he has to take care of. So uh-huh. hopefully we'll uh, hopefully we'll have him on board here. But uh, yeah, you got us today for the draft show. I'm excited to be back. You know, uh, Derek posted a picture I of saw me that. and looked like that picture looked like from like 1963. <laughs> yeah. You know, but that was the old uh, the old Valley Ranch days. Those were the first days of the draft show. Uh, super super excited to. Uh, for where we've uh, come. It's nice to be back in this chair again. I'm not going to lie to you. I love everybody that hosts here, and I I think it's so cool. But to be able to run one one of these shows today with you guys, especially on the the day of our Draft 101. Right. By the way. And I also want to say, too, this show, uh, uh, Draft Show is presented by Miller Lite. Uh, That's taste you can depend on. So I love me some Miller Lite, too. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, yeah, we got Draft 101 tonight. You guys excited about that? Kind of nervous for your first one? I'm I, I, I'm a little nervous because all the humans. But I, I can't wait to meet some of the fans and take some of their questions and see, you know, just kind of see. I think we just get an opportunity to see what the fan base feels like and some of their thoughts and what they think things are going to be like. And, um, yeah, and kind of prepare for next week. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of crowd controlling because then uh, it's going to turn into like a town hall type deal where they're just uh, airing out their grievances. And we're like, well, I don't know. Need a gavel. Say, but no, no, no. It's going to be fun. I'm excited about it. Uh, come out and, yeah, let's uh, let's have some good Yeah, fun. it's uh, it is a it is an invitation. Invitation only. It's kind of oh, like the mask. Sorry, it's, yeah, well, you got you to get a qualified. In, invite yourself last but, week but if you didn't come out. But there's a couple <laughs> of ways of doing this, though. It's going to be on DallasCowboys.com on the platforms, mm-hmm. uh, and it's also going to be on 105.3 The Fan on their website as well. So if you're uh, out of the out of the the area, out of the country, wherever, uh, please give us a listen tonight. It's going to be a couple hours. Of really taking, it's going to be like Twitter on the 20. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to get a lot of questions. Uh, we're going to have an opportunity to uh, have some opinions on some of these players. It's really, really a fun night. Mm-hmm. I, re- it's one of the favorite things that that we do. And I think again, thank Miller Light for helping, and thank the Jones family for hosting uh, here. This is a unique opportunity. We've had it over at our our place at uh, over at Odyssey, and now to have it at the where the players, the auditorium, man, that is super, super, super cool. cool. It will be cool. So look forward to that tonight. Um, what I want to do today, I want to start this show at about, you okay over there? Little yeah. hiccups? <laughs> it was a burp, to be honest. <laughs> Nervous about what's going on I was, today. I was like, I get to the hiccups, it okay. It was a burp, but I played it off. <laughs> you didn't play it off until I brought it up. I'm sorry about that. Cool. Yeah. Um, we haven't talked much about... And this used to be a responsibility of mine when I was with the Cowboys back all the way back in 2005. And now Todd Williams and Adam Pacific and those guys, uh, they, they do a good job of this. And this is the trading up and trading back. You've heard about the trade charts and stuff like that. And I've worked up some scenarios here where I've taken the chart and I'm going to try and take you back to a couple of places I got a few places I want to take you back to. First off, Nick, you're interested in going back, aren't you? Right, very much so. Yeah. Same. Okay. So, so going into this draft for you, yeah. If you were sitting in the war room, you would be let's move, no matter what, guy. N- not necessarily. There's two guys I would take at 24. Okay. Graham Barton, if he were to follow 24. Okay. And Troy Fatanu, if he were to follow 24. Okay. If either of those guys, or if both of those guys are off the board, yeah. I'm getting on the phones. Yeah. Aisha, are you interested in, you're, you're kind of the same way. It has to be maybe a guy or two that you really like, or are you interested in trying to recoup a pick or two as we go along here? No, I mean, I, I agree. I think it has to be a guy that I really like, but also, too, I think if you have the opportunity, we've talked about it, if you have the opportunity to get into that fourth round in any yeah. way, then you, baby, you need to do it. It's mm-hmm. just I, the way 
this board is and how top heavy it is, it's just hard to believe that there's not going to be so much value there and some players we really like in that fourth round. I'll tell you what, I think you're both right about this. I, my plan would be going in, I would have, if, if I was running the draft, I would have my pro guys on the phones right now throwing chum in the water. Right. I'm trying to get people interested, like, listen, hey, we're, we're here for business. We're open. You got my number. You know, if you're thinking about moving up, come on. Here yeah. we are. You know, don't 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 feel like you have to go you know, ahead of us. Mm-hmm. You know, if you need if your guy's there. Well, let me ask you another thing. As we look at this draft and another reason why we might need to bail other than getting the picks. I'm getting a vibe that all these offensive players are going to go early in this draft. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Is the best player on our board potentially going to be a defensive guy? Yeah, that's 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 a Is reality. That, you, you think so? You look at the, you look at the edge rushers that you could prob- probably expect to come off in the twenties. Yeah, uh, if Lyle Tulatu falls to that, sure. to that range, you got Chop Robinson, you got Darius Robinson. Uh, there's a lot of different guys that I think could be there in the twenties, but. Uh, do you are you saying would you take that defensive guy if he is? That's BPA? what I'm. That's what I'm asking you guys. Yeah. Because I, you know, you guys have tell, you've got me convinced that you know, hey, we've got to fix this offensive line, mm-hmm. one way or another. We've got to find a way a, a tackle. We've got an option to tackle. We can move our guy. You know, that's not you know not very good. Yeah. You're not a fan of that. Yeah. But you know, you might get overvoted in the room. I'm but, okay with it. It's just not my preference. Okay. <laughs> so we're so we're but you know that might be a possibility. You know, yep. we, we're all kind of thinking about the center. Our centers are a little banged up, though, you know, mm-hmm. but we're looking at them. The thing that I'm starting to hear more and more and more is all these quarterbacks go. Some of these receivers go. Mm-hmm. These offensive linemen go. Mm-hmm. We might be at 24 looking at a defensive player mm-hmm. that, that all of a sudden now we're comfortable taking our BYU offensive tackle right. at 24 uh, you know we yeah. we it, that might be where we're at we might be stuck we might be stuck where all those all those offensive players are gone and now we're looking at defensive guys as the best player right i mean for me listen i know like i know bobby feels feels very strongly about not getting another dt yeah early but just the way that DT typically falls, where you know they, they typically aren't off the board into some of that that twenty range or whatever. If I see a Byron Murphy is there, I don't know if I'm just gonna skip over that. I don't know if I'm just gonna be like, ah, nah, I'm cool on him or whatever. This de- you don't have depth at the defensive interior right now. Mm-hmm. It's a problem. Even on the offensive side, you've brought it up. You have Brock Hoffman. You do have a TJ Bass. You do have an Austin Richards that maybe you just don't know everything from yet just yet, but you do have some guys on the offense. Maybe you ain't got that over there on defense right now. Yeah, and yeah. you've lost a lot of depth at edge to you guys' this point about there maybe being a defensive player there that you're interested in. Yeah, and I understand Bobby's point to the fact of Byron Murphy being a three-tech. And you don't need a three-tech no. necessarily mm-hmm. in, in this draft overall, much less with the very first pick that you take. So, uh, with that in mind, would y'all be okay with Darius Robinson? I mean, he's a guy that I can was play about from, to say him. Yes. He's a guy that can play from three to seven. He's very versatile. He's two hundred and eighty pounds. Um, he he's a great run defender. If if that's what ends up happening, where all the offensive linemen are off the board, you don't feel comfortable with who's available. Maybe you've traded back into that twenty eight to thirty two range. Yeah, and you take Darius Robinson. How do you yeah. feel about that coming? Yeah, out? I like it. Yeah, I, I mean. I, I'm with you. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I like it because, of, to your point, the the versatility. Yeah. And you, I think you do need that on the defensive line right now, especially with some of the losses that you've taken at the edge position and things like that. Now, I understand that that Byron Murphy is considered a three-tech. I also think that – You've the, seen him play some one, too, haven't yes, you? Yes, know? yeah. I, I think he's capable. But I, I also do consider who these guys are playing next to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when you're playing next to – um, homie, was Jesus, like when you're playing next to what is the guy? Tavondre Sweat. Yeah, Tavondre Sweat. Sweat. When you're Sweat, playing yeah. next to him, yeah, I mean, you're gonna be able to do some more three techie things because yeah. people are having to commit to double teaming him and having to deal with him. So I do think I, I would be. I was literally about to just bring him up. I I would be okay with Darius Robinson, okay, as well because of the versatility. All right, we we potentially with all these. Keep an eye on this with all these offensive players maybe going ahead of you. You might be wiped out. Wow. Thinking about that. Yeah. You know, you might be looking at one of these. So let's trade back. Let's try. Okay. Tampa Bay is on the phone with us right now. Mm-hmm. Tampa Bay currently sits at 26. 
Tampa Bay's pick that we would pick up just for that small two slot move that they made, we would pick up their 125, which is a fourth round pick. Again, this is working off the Cowboys charts and stuff like that. Okay, so just to start it off, that's maybe an offer that we look at right there. We pick up 125. So we cool with that. We got our fourth round pick, right? Yeah. I'm cool with (laughs) it. Uh, it, it's only because I'm looking at the other offers out here, so I'm going to wait until you're, you're you're finished going through them, Brian. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's that's what get, that's what we the start. That's yeah. our start. Yeah, Arizona now calls us at 27. Mm-hmm. We pick up 138 and 162, both fifth round picks. We interested in that one at all? We didn't get our four. Yeah, but now we're now after the Arizona. If we did the Arizona trade. We pick up their picks. Like I say, you now would have 27, 56, 87, 138, 162, 174, 216, 233, 244. That would be your draft haul if you traded by picking up both fifths from Arizona. That would be going from 24 to 27. Yeah, now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw something out here. <clears throat> you give me these multiple fives. Yeah. Watch me try and move these things going back up. Yeah, okay. And we'll get into that, okay? We okay with that deal? Would, it, we, would, would we consider that deal? Yeah, I, I definitely, because as it sits right now, 87 is your third-round pick, right. and then you don't pick until 174 in the fifth, and you can kind of divvy that in half, and you get two picks in between. I'm right. okay with that. Okay, I'm that's okay pick. That. I issue we get pick 138, which is a fifth, and pick 162 plus our own fifth. So we're going to have three fifths is what we're going to do with that Arizona trade. You said you're going to try to flip them? Watch me. Okay, well. Watch me. I mean, I would definitely be I would be willing to listening to it because to your point like the way the way that I I, I really do think that the the start of that day 2 is going to be crazy as far as the 4th and the 5th round because I just do I do I think some of these wide receivers are going to fall. I are, are going to be there. And then when you talk about some of the offensive line value, I do think that some of those guys are still going to be there too. So I would I would flip the fifth. I, w- I would be open to that. I like I like the Tampa Bay situation Okay, that's what I was going to ask. That's what I was going to ask. The Tampa Bay situation still is the one that's intriguing to us because we get the fourth-round pick, right? But the fifths are, to your point, though, you can do something with the fifths, yeah? Yeah, we could. Nick will find me some players in the yeah. fifth one. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm sure yeah. Nick, there's a lot of value there, no? There is. There is, especially there in the fifth. It depends on what you need going into day three, but I also like the idea of packaging those and, and moving up in the third or something like that. I, I personally like the Arizona one a little bit more as of now. Yeah. Aisha, Buffalo's on the phone now at 28. If you trade with Buffalo, you're going to go from 24 to 28. You're going to pick up a fourth. You're going to pick up pick 128. Fourth round pick and pick 144, which is a fifth. You make the Buffalo trade. You're now looking at 28, 56, 87, 128, 144, 174, 216, 233, 244. That's after the Buffalo trade. So you pick up that middle, you pick up that fourth, 128, and pick 144. That gives you. You're fourth, and then now you're looking at two fives. Quick question. How yes. comfortable are y'all? Uh, where is your comfort level as far as where does it end whenever you're saying, okay, Cowboys are trading back? How far back do you want to go before you start getting, start getting uncomfortable with it? The problem, I'm, uh, the problem I'm running into is right now is if I'm starting to feel like that, that maybe my guy's not going to be on the board mm-hmm. at 20. I mean, I might have to really – I might have to – I'm I'm willing to really bail. I'm going to take this thing all the way to Kansas City. Yeah. At 32. Jeez, really? I'm okay with taking it to the second round, even. Yeah. Yeah. I did for our exercise. I did it just to get to 32. Yeah. 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 Can y'all yeah. explain what that means? What y'all are saying right now? When when you when like when you're taking this thing back, like maybe your player's not there. I'm comfortable going. I think Nick as well is comfortable going all the way back to Kansas City's pick at 32. Yeah. Oh, okay. and, and, and trying to pick up as many of these picks. Because, like, to see, the Buffalo trade's inviting to me just because of the, the fourth-round pick we pick up. And the fifth. And the fifth-round pick as well. So I'm not going too terribly far. I'm going four players back. Yeah. So, okay, and that's a really good question. Are you wor- How far back are you willing to go? Are you Because to me, I think there is some value after – Say, and that's why some of these trades like 26, 27, 28, 
I feel like going back that just that little bit, you still pick up good, but I still feel like I'm going to get a really good player there. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, I feel like that. You know, I, I and and I feel like I could go all the way to. I think I could go all the way to Kansas City at 32, mm-hmm. and potentially grab the right guy that I want. I, I mean, agree. are we are we in agreement on that? Or I agree. Yeah. Is there is yes. See, to me, I don't feel like so far that we've had a trade that we wouldn't accept. Yeah. No, right? Yeah, I haven't. I, I'm interested in all of them. The Buffalo one is is really appealing, though. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you have anybody in mind when if you were to go to 28? Mm-hmm. Do you have somebody in mind <laughs> to 28 specifically? Yeah. Uh, it would it, that would be a Kingsley Sue Matia situation, or sure. a Jordan Morgan situation, sure. Um, Tyler Guyton still there at 28. I mean, you're still going to have offensive linemen there. Mm-hmm. Let's say the offensive linemen are off the board A. Or B, they don't like those guys that right. are sitting there on the board at that at that time. Then you have the opportunity to take uh, uh, Darius Robinson, or if you want to go ahead and get that linebacker, just grab Edger and Cooper. That's why I think I would be okay with if they ended up going all the way back to like the first five picks of the second round, even okay. because they can still get that linebacker to mm-hmm. open up day two, and they're, they're probably picking up two to three picks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that I, would be that would be fascinating. What if they shock us and just go receiver? <laughs> <laughs> Brian Thomas Jr. Yeah, I so, mean, it, it, it's it's a it's a thought. It's a thought. I I will say there's going to be a lot of hype around Brian Thomas Jr. and Xavier Mitchell and potentially Ad, uh, excuse me uh, Adonai Xavier uh, Xavier Worthy, Worthy and yeah. I Mitchell. Yeah, I, I think there's going to be a lot of hype around those names as the, as the night one starts to kind of slide slide mm-hmm. off and uh, slide off the board. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a lot of talk around those guys. Somebody's going to take a take a swing on one of those guys there late in those uh, late in the first do round. Do you have a uh, do you have a one on Lad McConkey? I do not. I have a two. I have a yeah. two as well. Yeah. Okay. I just so, want to ask. But I've seen him at the end of the first round. Yeah. I've and seen a lot what, of mocks where that's what I was San asking. Francisco, Kansas City, those t- those teams are kind of talked yeah. about. Thanks. Okay. Baltimore's on the phone, Aisha. They, they're going to last. I'm skipping Detroit because Detroit doesn't have the capital to do it. Yeah, mm-hmm. Detroit would have to give next year's pick, so I'm going to skip them. Okay, if you go now to the Baltimore trade of this, Baltimore's on the phone, and uh, Baltimore, you're, they're going to give you, they're going to give you just pick. They're going to give you a third round pick. They're going to give you pick 93. So now what you do is you have your current configuration, but you've added another three. So. That gives you, you're going to 30, the 56, the 87, 93, and 174, 216, 233, 244. Okay, the key with the pick 93, that's the end of the third round. Yeah, top 100. That gets us in the top 100, but it also lets us, since we're missing out on that four for the next day, Mm -hmm. we get first crack. We get first crack at that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So... How would we consider that? Is that important enough to you guys, the Baltimore trade? We're going to go to 30, but we're going to pick before the start of day three. Mm -hmm. Where's that on the level of comfort for you guys? I think I like the Buffalo trade just a little bit more just because there's more capital there with fourth and fifth Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to just getting the third. Yeah. But I'd be just fine with it at the end of the day. Picking up another top 100 pick, that's, that's a huge value in its own right. Yeah, I mean, I'm one of the people that thinks that, you know, do they have the ability to go tackle? Yeah, but I think the guard class is that that's where the the third round is where the third the guard class yeah. to me is rich, still kind of rich in that area. So, if you ended up grabbing like I, I don't know, that's, I don't know. I don't know if I don't know if homie mixing in the third round, but if you end up grabbing like a Christian Mahogany or yeah, something I like that. Yeah, I was thinking that I was thinking that too. You can you can tackle that in the third round and then also too from a, even a linebacker perspective, if you were going to go linebacker the third round in those later third round area, that's where it's still kind of um it still still has some value like there's some guys there that maybe you if you have if you have the opportunity to d- double dip, you can kill two birds with one stone by having that third so but i do i think the buffalo one is is the best one so far too though (laughs) okay we're going to take our break here and uh, when we come back i want to finish up because san francisco and kansas city also call i want to finish this up and then we're going to then we're going to turn around and we're going to trade back up we're going to take this draft draft capital we're going to pick which one of these we want we're going to talk about trading back up and uh, see if we can and can get back into this thing and, and and do some good things. And then when that's all done, we'll uh, we'll we'll move the Twitter questions to the back end and catch all that. So Let's you do got it. you got the draft show. Uh, we'll be right back after these words. 
I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And they snap at the Prescott who looks right. It's not there. He escapes left. He'll run for a first down. Just like football, when it comes to crypto, it's important to have a team you can trust. With blockchain.com, I know I'm in good hands. Since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. I'm Darren Woodson, former Dallas Cowboy player and Super Bowl champion. When I played in the NFL at a high level, I relied on my vision to see the field. As I started getting older, I noticed my vision wasn't as good, and I was getting frustrated from wearing my glasses all day. I went to Laser Care Eye Center and Dr. G talked about all the options. Thanks to technology and Laser Care Eye Center, I can see near, far, and between. Don't fumble your vision any longer. Visit them at dfweyes.com and tell them Darren sent you. They got me back on my game. In a stressful world, Lincoln provides balance and calm amidst the chaos by creating sanctuaries that move you through the world with ease. Our vehicles make your time richer and more uplifting with human-centric design, intelligent technology, and powerful performance. As the official luxury vehicle of the Dallas Cowboys, driving a Lincoln is just another way to show your team pride. Experience our full lineup of luxury vehicles, including the Corsair, Aviator, Navigator, and Nautilus at Lincoln.com. Hi, I'm Danny McRae, Dallas Cowboys alumni player here with Smoothie King. And Smoothie King wants to ask you, what's that sound? That's the sound of us magically transforming our smoothie bowls into two new decadent flavors. Dig into a cool acai or pitaya bowl handcrafted with crunchy, purely Elizabeth granola, fresh strawberries, and finished with a velvety chocolate hazelnut drizzle. Perfect for breakfast, lunch, or anytime you want to munch. And that's the sound of you making them disappear. Smoothie Bowls, now in two new decadent flavors. Only at Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. This is the DallasCowboys.com Draft Show. All right, it's 2024 draft. I mean, we're a week away from doing this. Let's go. Yeah. Wow. Come out to the Star in Frisco for Dallas Cowboys Draft Weekend presented by Miller Lite. The party starts on Thursday, April 25th at 6.30 p.m. Enjoy life. Li- uh, enjoy live draft coverage, player appearances, live performances, and more on Friday. Come back for draft night out with alumni. Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders appearances at the Miller Lighthouse. Then finish strong on Saturday with the Draft Day 5K presented by Baylor Scar- Scott and White. For more details, visit DallasCowboys.com slash draft. Enjoy life, too. Come yeah. enjoy some life out there. Enjoy some life. I tell you what, that party will be very interesting if they trade out of the first round. <laughs> like how, <laughs> how, how will the vibe of that party go? Uh, it's never, it's never a good, never this a good is, look when you back yeah, up like that. Oh, it'll tense. clear out. Hurry. It will. Yeah. Dang. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's gonna be tense, man. Like it's. I, I was talking about it on our show. It's just how much pressure is on this team to get contribution yeah. from these guys. Mm-hmm immediately like yeah. <laughs> yeah they can't play around no yeah. they can't play around no you're right about that that's that is aisha morrison nick harris brian brought us here on the draft show chris beam in the back handling things uh, uh the uh draft show is brought to you by miller light and uh, we're excited about that by the way draft show all next week yeah all Every draft show every day. Let's go. Should Take be us happy home, about that. Take us I'm, home, Brian. Let's how about go. that? How about that? Draft show every day next week. You ready for this one, Aisha? My <laughs> Are you sure? I so y'all like I I struggle with like you're great hypotheticals. Yeah. I, I I I'm ready to get to the yeah. The, I'm ready, ready to, from the start. Yes, tanning and cards. I'm ready for the real thing. Gotcha. The real deal, Holyfield. All right, let's trade a couple more of these picks if we can. All right, we're, we've we've talked about already. We traded with or talked about trades with Tampa, Arizona, Buffalo, and Baltimore. The before I went to break, the Baltimore and San Francisco deals are very similar because Baltimore traded you pick 93, which was a third round pick. And now San Francisco is offering pick ninety four, which is a third round pick. So, if you're if you're considering the Baltimore or San Francisco trades, they're virtually the same pick, with the exception of one spot different. Both third round yeah. picks. So that uh, something to consider. You get Baltimore on the phone. You get San Francisco on the phone. You would probably take the Baltimore trade because it's one pick better in the third round. Yeah. Not doing nothing with. Not helping you, San Fran. Not helping. Not helping at all. <laughs> all right. Kansas City's on the clock. Or, excuse me, Kansas City's going to call you, Aisha. Mm-hmm. They're going to offer you, they're going to offer you uh, pick 95, 
and pick 131, which is a fourth round pick. So you get your, you're in that range we talked about 92, excuse me, 93, 94, 95, which again ends the ends the second day, which I think is key because, but Kansas City's called and they said, hey, we'll let you end the second day, but we'll also let you in the end of the fourth round. Yeah. So now by going from 24 to 32. All right, Nick, tell me. You still got some players in range for you? Yes, yep. he got yep. excited. Look, I look I'm okay. With, I, I'm You're okay trade, with you want to trade the second round. Uh, okay you keep saying this. that. Okay, we'll work on that another yeah. day. On <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm okay with this. I think this is the best. Commanders deal. trade sound like a good one too. If you want to pick up a bunch of picks, yeah, no going, kidding, going right? Gosh, commanders. talking about capital and top yeah. 100 picks. Yeah, there man, you go. get Dan Quinn on the phone and, and yeah. strike a deal. But um, yeah, I think this Kansas City trade, if you want to stay in the first round, I think there will still be some good offensive linemen available there at 32, and you also kind of have the freedom to take again the linebacker or yeah. an edge rusher or uh if you want to jump on anything else I, I think 32 still makes sense to be able to do that for the guys that you would expect to be available from let's just stay at 22 mm -hmm. the guys that you would expect to be available from 22 to 32 i feel like you can get any of those guys in that in that range because you look at the teams that are picking in that range right mm -hmm. you look at the tampa bays and detroit Th those are those guys are going to be focusing on defensive linemen sure if you're if you want to get a defensive lineman then maybe you pick somewhere in between them but you look at uh baltimore san francisco kansas city detroit even you can make the argument receiver hunting these right. guys are receiver hunting mm -hmm. and uh, the cowboys necessarily i know there's some mocks out there that have them taking a receiver here in the first round i don't think they're receiver hunting in the first round so i think you could still slide back those teams are taking different positions than probably what you're expecting will maybe one or two offensive linemen can off the, come off the board yeah but i think you have to be comfortable in doing that and i think you would be yeah i'm i mean to to nick's point i i do think there's going to be some value there it's okay. just so it's just I, these these quarterbacks are going to go. We're going to see a run on tackles, I'm sure. There's going to be some value there, especially if you're talking about it from an offensive standpoint. Right. I think that offensively, a lot to you point to your point, a mm -hmm. lot of those guys are going to go. If you want to go defense and you yep. have a first round ground grade on a guy, yeah. I venture to say that they're going to be there towards the end of these rounds. So yeah. All right. Of all the ones that we dealt with, and let me let me let me just maybe put in, put into perspective what the situation. Uh, we look at point, point totals on our chart, and the, 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 each pick is assigned a value. If you were to make the Tampa Bay trade, your total draft haul, everything that you have would be 402 points. The next most positive trade for you would be the Kansas City trade at 401. If you added up all the points, the value of all your picks, the Kansas City trade would make you at 401. The next two tie, that would be Arizona at 400, Buffalo at 400. The one that has the next most value to it would be Baltimore at 397, and the San Francisco trade only gets you 390. So if you just added up all the uh, – after the trade, the Tampa one makes the most sense. You don't get the most draft capital, yeah. but you get the fourth-round pick you were hunting. Right. Okay. And you're picking six spots earlier than Kansas City, who would be the, right. the next mm -hmm. right. highest. Yeah. Right. So is there any – is there of all the trades we've gone through, is there anyone that really you'd say, okay, get that GM on the phone and let's make this trade? Kansas City. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah. It would be – I just think there's just so much. We're going to look up in that third and fourth round, and we're going to be giddy. Yeah. about the players that are still there and are still available in those rounds. And I think being able to take advantage of that would be uh, really – I think it would be very helpful going into that last day of the draft yeah. and knowing what the heck you got. Okay, so you guys are interested in going all the way down to 32. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it, yeah sure. Any, any – you, you're not sure? You're sure? I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure – but it, I, I still really – I still was really intrigued by the Buffalo thing too, though. And I know that it's not, like, all right. the best on the point system, but I just... Let me walk you through then. Let me walk you through this then. All right? Let me go through these various deals, and then we're going to take what picks we got, and I'm going to go through each team that we had an opportunity, okay. and I'm going to try and trade up. And you guys tell me if, if it works out for you. By using the selections that we had, mm -hmm. plus the picks that we got... Tell me which which one of these deals seems to work the best for you. Okay. 
After the Arizona trade, I mentioned this, Aisha. We got picks. We got 138, 162, 174. All fifth-round picks. I'm taking those, and I'm calling the L.A. Chargers. The L.A. Chargers have two picks in the fourth round. They have pick 105 and pick 110. Both fourth-round picks. Both early in the fourth round. Nick. Interested in moving 138, 162, 174, all fifth round picks for yeah. 105 or 110. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, well, it's 105 or 110. I was right. reading it as 105 yeah. and 110. No, no, it's one um, or. Oof. Yeah, you're, uh, you're going to move. I'm probably staying home. I'm probably staying home there. I, I don't. I don't love three for one in that situation. Just to go up one one round on day three, I I think you could still get value there in the fifth with with those three picks. Uh, it, it'd be tough, but I, I'd probably say no to that. Aisha, I get you your fourth round pick, but I got to give up three to get there. Three what? Three draft picks. Oh no, baby, you ain't you ain't got the luxury in this draft. You can't be playing these games. All right. <laughs> if if that were to happen, let's say you get one hundred and five. Yeah. You're not picking again until two two thirty three. No. Two sixteen. Two sixteen. You know how painful it's gonna be to just sit there and wait. To see what happens, we're going to be doing that on day three, regardless. I think. <laughs> but think, but think about think about the think about the situation though with yeah. the number the the first four picks that you get. Yeah, that's that's fair. So you could that's be fair. so you think they would be chilling if they get they get some guys that they think are potential starters right away, and mm-hmm. then you just you got a shot to get four out. players before one hundred and five at one by 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 one hundred and five. I think it depends how much value you put into quantity over quality, or vice versa in this draft. Why your eyes get big? Because that's a lot. <laughs> First of all, baby, that, that's a lot of people to be being able to pick up. Yeah, in all the right. top one hundred. All yeah. right, so we're not interested in that one. <sighs> Buffalo. If we did the Buffalo trade, we would we would take we would take pick one twenty eight. It's a fourth round pick. We would take 144, both those picks we got. If that's a fifth. So we take a four and a five. We call New England for pick 103, which is the top of the fourth round. Or we can go back to our buddies at the Chargers at 105 or 110 for a fourth. So we're taking our fourth round pick, 128, and we're going to dance that thing up to 103 to New England. But the, the price of it is going to cost us our fifth. Interested in that, guys. Or we can go to the Chargers with the same deal. Question, are we comparing this to all of the trades? Or is this like a very like in individual, in a vacuum type type situation yeah. with Buffalo? Yeah. Which one is it? The vacuum. <laughs> vacuum? Yeah. Okay. If it's in a vacuum, <laughs> because I'm looking at the Kansas City trade, I'm like, well, you have a third and a fourth. But if it's in a vacuum and Buffalo's the only one that's uh, that's made that call to you in the first yeah. round and you're trying to package those around – I, I I'm okay with I'm okay with it because you're you're getting a if close you get to a the, top yeah. 100 yeah and sure you got to give up the fifth but you're basically just moving up to the to 103 to 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 grab a guy early on day three uh, I'm fine with it I'm fine with it Aisha I'm gonna dance you from 128 in the fourth mm-hmm. to 103 I'm gonna take you 25 spots up to start the day of day three mm-hmm. but it's gonna cost you a fifth round pick I have a feeling I know what she's gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, nah, I'm, I'm, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm indecisive. I'm trying to think about the fifth round. Do they have, a, they have a fifth round pick, right? They still, do. would you, you still would have the fifth at the white one seventy four. At one seventy four. So you still would have a pick, yeah. Mm-hmm. Even if you did this and move up to the right. Board? I'm just trying to get you higher up the board. I'm trying to get you, I'm get, get you twenty five spots up to take your guy to start day three. Well, I mean, yeah, when we start getting into that fifth round, you know, that's that's when that. That uh, Dallas Day and all that stuff be uh, coming in. The, they, they start looking at them undrafted free agents and what they about to pay them. So uh, I, I would be cool with that. I would be cool with all that right. because I think that they, they'll have some things figured out on the back end post-draft to get some of those guys that maybe didn't get drafted, like a TJ Bass, who I thought was a fifth-round pick last year at the very sure. least. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I like what you're saying. All right, this once again, Nick, for you. <laughs> Nick? <laughs> Baltimore. If you did the Baltimore trade, just say you did. Yeah. That would be you would send pick eighty seven, which is your own, and then pick ninety three that you got from Baltimore. I'm going to call Green Bay, and I'm going to try and get their second round pick, pick fifty eight, or the Houston Texans pick fifty nine. So I'm okay. giving my own third round pick, and I'm giving the Baltimore third round pick to Green Bay at fifty eight 
or Houston at 59 okay. to get in the second round. So I'm giving up my two <laughs> to go up into the second Man. round, pick 58 or 59. Imagine not picking from 58 to 174. That would be that would be torture for us in here, at least. It's a heart <laughs> Think about the quality of the yeah. player. Yeah, that, that's that's where I'm thinking about here because you get to, you get three picks in the top 58, 59. Yeah. Um, but yeah, nothing in the third, nothing in the fourth, <laughs> and then you basically have to watch the entire fifth go by before you finally get that fifth round comp pick. Um, <laughs> I, I'm staying put with what I got in that situation. Right. Yeah. So we're not we're not interested in doing that. Yeah. Heck no, especially not in the second round. The same thing we could have done to San Francisco. It's the yeah. same trade. We could yeah. have done, if if San Francisco, if we took the San Francisco deal. That yeah. hurry up and wait's gonna hurt. All right, man. I, I'm glad you guys don't just sit here and pick. <laughs> how, I mean, how is your board? Your board then by what you guys are telling me, your stacks and your boards are deep enough that you're like, nah, Brian. I can't. You can't entice me with a second round pick right now. You can't entice me with a third round pick right now. That you have that much confidence in your boards mm -hmm. that you were going to just pick players and you're going to help this football team. I have a lot of confidence until it gets to about 120, and I, that's that's kind of like where I'm pinpointing as far as okay, I'd like to find value in 120. So what is that? That would be mid fourth round. Yeah. I if you can pick up more picks in that range, I'm cool with it. And, and but if you're sacrificing you know, that 60 to 120 range, I don't know. I, th I still feel like there's some really good talent there on that back half I would love to be able to grab. I think the early second has some guys that 100% can come in and, and be difference makers right away, even so. So, I And also, too, I, th this team just gets a little funky in the second round. So I don't want them doing a whole bunch of extra stuff if they ain't got to make So add, adding, these, adding the Green Bay pick in the second yeah, or adding that Houston like, pick? Don't overcomplicate it. <laughs> Jeez. All right. We seem to everybody seems to like the Kansas City trade, right? Yeah, that's I liked the it one. Before, yeah. All right, that's the one that we went went into thinking that okay, if Kansas City called and said Andy Reid called us and said, hey, we were interested in doing this, this is what we would do. All right, after the Kansas City trade, we made it. We've got pick ninety five, which is a third round pick. We've got pick one thirty one, which is a fourth. Okay, I'm going to call Vegas. At 77, mm -hmm. which is a third-round pick. So I'm going to try and go from 95 to 77 or 78, which is the Commanders, in the third round. But it's going to cost me my fourth-round pick, pick 131. Say it one more time for me. I'm sorry. No problem. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. A lot of numbers. <laughs> yeah. Kansas City, after the Kansas City trade, I'm going to move pick 95 that we got. It's a third round. And pick 131, which is a fourth round, which we got. I'm going to call Las Vegas, and I'm trying to get pick 77, which is a third round pick, or pick 78 from the Commanders, which is a third round pick. Would you be interested in going up to 77 or 78 for our 95 and giving up our fourth round 131? What do you expect to fly off the board late round three? Is that probably where you hope that McKinley Jackson doesn't fall off the board? Or if I you're still linebacker hunting, you're hoping Trevin Wallace doesn't fall off the board? I think yeah. this depends on what you what you need there in late round three. Because let's say it's gone to plan. You've got an offensive lineman and you've right. got Jonathan Brooks in the second round. Then you're probably you're, – you're, you are going to be hunting for a run stopper, whether that's linebacker or defensive tackle. If you expect them to fly off the board there late in round three, then, yeah, I'm making this call. But if you're like, hey, there's a group of guys here that we we enjoy, uh, we feel like we're, we're comfortable with getting any of them, yeah. then I'm staying put and – what, what, taking the extra that's pick. a great that's a that's great great thought what what position though if we were to go up what position at 77 or 78 do you have in mind linebacker probably yeah linebacker yeah. for you yeah mm. is okay. we're dreaming of peyton wilson's there yeah yeah, yeah right? most definitely i think so but i mean medicals who knows we just never who know knows? because <laughs> i think we thought we uh, uh, Beamer told me last in my last show like we're thinking I'm over thinking Tavondre Sweat's gonna fall I didn't think it, Duke uh, Duke Dane has him in the fourth yeah mm -hmm. and Dane and, it, I, and a lot of that is the whispers I think that uh, Dane's hearing about yeah. the play yeah I mean and of course and it's, it's of course it's behavioral stuff but yeah. when you hear some of the stuff about Peyton Wilson 
Yeah. It's it's it's, it's that scary to yeah, where you medical, may be that nervous yeah, about it. Medical so is very scary. Very there. possible, I think, for him to fall as well. What about? I don't know. I think corners depth depth goes a lot further. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but I think to to Nick's point, DT is probably the biggest thing because I think that there's a distinct drop off after that uh, third round on yeah. on talent. There's some a few guys sprinkled in there. Few few yeah. few guys sprinkled in there, but you you will see the difference in um, the guys coming off the board once that's over. Yeah. Can I interest you guys in a receiver at 77? You know what? You might be able to twist my leg a little bit, Brian. Uh, there will be some fun guys there available in the third round. I, I, I feel agree. like I've been banging on this table. The third round is going to be so much we fun. we got to keep an open receivers. mind here, don't we, guys? Yeah, I, I think so. But it, and in that scenario where you're going offensive line, Jonathan Brooks, yeah. then you go receiver, and you have yet to address anything on defense going into day three. That's Or going in, not into day three, going into pick 87. And that's where you're just like, I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I just kind of feel like that if they could if they can get in that first pick, if they could take care of that offensive line position, whether it's the tackle or the center. It would make a difference. I think I could I think I could keep my options open. Yeah. I know. I mean I it, I don't want to sit there and draft for need, but you know, I'm probably gonna have to, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You definitely one hundred percent until you get to day three. Can, I feel like Can I get my get running back round. at seventy seven? You could. I, I think most definitely. So let's say in that situation they go ahead and take the linebacker in the second round. Yeah. There there will be some running backs that'll fly off the board there in the third. You're expecting guys like uh, Jalen Wright to come off in the yeah. third, probably Bucky Irving to come off in the third. I'm trying to find my running backs. Uh, Blake Corum, Marshawn Lloyd will probably come off in the third. So there's going to be some guys there that are just flying, flying. Braylon Allen, mm-hmm. Audric Estime, mm-hmm. and if you start seeing those guys really come off the board, yeah, get on the phone and go get that running back. Okay, what I what I'm gathering here is you guys aren't excited about making this trade. I, it, it just depends. It depends what position you need. I think going into yeah. the third round, like because you could you could sell me on, hey, these running backs are coming off the board. We need to move up twelve spots and go get our guy. You could yeah. sell me on that one hundred percent. But if you're looking at you know the linebacker, the defensive tackle class, it, it just kind of depends how the board's falling at that point. Yeah, I agree. I appreciate you guys doing yeah. this with me. Yeah, today. yeah, this yeah. is fun. That's, that was uh, that was a little trade up. Tra- well, actually, trade back, trade up. Uh, as you can see, though, it's it's going to come down to. A lot of it had to do with trying to get either that pick in the late day two yeah. or pick up that fourth round pick. Uh, you know, and my, my my scouts here are more than willing to go to Kansas City uh, to if, if Kansas City wants to come from 32 up to 24. My guys seem like that they would be with good with that. So, yeah. all right, good. when we come back, let's get to your Twitter questions. We will do that next. You got the draft show. We'll be right back. Hi, Drew Pearson, former Dallas Cowboy and now Pro Football Hall of Famer here. If you're struggling with your vision and tired of those contacts and glasses, don't throw a Hail Mary. Go where I went. Laser Care Eye Center, the official LASIK partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Drew, thank you so much for trusting us with your vision correction procedure. At Laser Care Eye Center, we offer six different vision correction procedures to help patients see. Check them out at dfwis.com. Tell them Drew sent you. Hood, hood. In a stressful world, Lincoln provides balance and calm amidst the chaos by creating sanctuaries that move you through the world with ease. Our vehicles make your time richer and more uplifting with human-centric design, intelligent technology, and powerful performance. As the official luxury vehicle of the Dallas Cowboys, driving a Lincoln is just another way to show your team pride. Experience our full lineup of luxury vehicles, including the Corsair, Aviator, Navigator, and Nautilus at Lincoln.com. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And they snap it to Prescott, who looks right. It's not there. He escapes left. He'll run for a first down. Just like football, when it comes to crypto, it's important to have a team you can trust. With Blockchain.com, I know I'm in good hands. Since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. Hi, I'm Danny McRae, Dallas Cowboys alumni player here with Smoothie King. And Smoothie King wants to ask you, what's that sound? That's the sound of us magically transforming our smoothie bowls into two new decadent flavors. Dig into a cool acai or pitaya bowl handcrafted with crunchy, purely Elizabeth granola, fresh strawberries, and finished with a velvety chocolate hazelnut drizzle. Perfect for breakfast, lunch, or anytime you want to munch. And that's the sound of you making them disappear. Smoothie Bowls, now in two new decadent flavors. Only at Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. 
is the DallasCowboys.com Draft Show. How about this, man? We got the Reliant Home Run Derby. The 11th annual Reliant Home Run Derby is back at Riders Field in Frisco on May 1st at 6 p.m. Come and see your favorite Dallas Cowboys players swing for the fences to raise money for the Salvation Army. Admission and parking are free. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash Reliant H R D to learn more. See you there. All right, we're back here at the draft show. Uh, this segment is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. <laughs> you like that, huh? Mm-hmm. I, this, All right. I know the sound. This is it's uh I, I kind of moved the show around a little bit. We usually will do Twitter on the 20 in between, but I'm gonna get to these questions. I just wanted to make sure I had time to get through all that yep. trade stuff. And I appreciate you guys. Numbers give everybody a headache, you know, at times when you're yeah. dealing with them. But I, I, I just had to see how committed you guys were to picking these players. Sometimes you think, you know, scouts have this this way of saying, give me picks, give me picks, give me picks, give me picks. Yeah. But you got to kind of be able to navigate around to kind of get the players you want. So, what's up? No, then I, I don't want to sound nuts or nothing, but we're, we're, Fabian Lovett from from Florida State is a DT, yeah? Yeah, correct. And he's draftable, yes? Correct, yeah. Okay, well, because sure. um, we were trying to figure out, we were talking about size, guys yeah. that size. He's 6'5", 3'3". 335. Right. Uh, my you're bad. just no you're looking for those big ones. I just didn't see yeah, I yeah, just haven't yeah. seen I haven't seen him, him I just haven't seen him and I didn't know what y'all had him labeled as cuz some people look at him as some for some reason despite his size he could do some DN things but I know that's random. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to nah, interrupt you. I just it, I just thought about like looking at DTs that are we'll later. We talk about him tonight on Draft 101. Yeah, we, bring up them when people ask you, "Hey Aisha, give me some big defensive tackles that are 300 and 35 pounds or plus. Well, we were talking about size. And yeah. That it's not a lot of. There's big, not. A lot of guys There's that not. are over 300 pounds. Yeah. And he's tall and he's got a little weight to him. So yeah. I was just. So I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No. Nah, all good, man. All good. Um, all right. Let's get into. Uh, in our last uh, few moments here, let's get into a little Twitter on the 20. Twitter, Twitter on the 20. 20. All right. 20. Thank you very much, Beamer. For all, <laughs> Beamer, thank you for all these years of putting up with me. I really do appreciate you, brother. You've been a big part of this, too. It's all good. All right. We got uh, we got Red. My man, Red. His He's got a hypothetical for you guys. Aisha, I know you love hypotheticals. That's right. Let's say the Cowboys are able to pick Graham Barton, as Nick Harris just cartwheels down the – Yeah. <laughs> In the uh, first, me and Zach both. Yeah, but but in, in, he they draft him in the first, but they're not able to add a tackle. It's the fifth round, and Limmer and Norzad are there. Would you be willing to pick another center and play Barton at guard or tackle? I like what you're thinking, Red. I thought that was a great question. That's a fantastic question. Go ahead. I like Nick. what you're thinking, Red. I think this would be. Uh, uh, this would be Armageddon in the fan base if you didn't get a tackle in the draft, but um, it, it would. It, I think there's some there's some options there because you can. Um, it, it was either Limmer or Norzad there in the fifth. Yeah, you, you could you could try to work those guys in at center, and you could throw them in for competition at center, um, and understand that uh, Graham Barton does have guard flex as well, but. If you're if you're looking at Graham Barton and you're seeing a guy that is probably going to be one of the smartest players on the offensive line, I can't say the smartest because you have Zach Martin still in the building, but one of the players and the uh, smartest players on the offensive line. Do you want him manning up that center position and calling out things from from the line, or are you, are you okay him doing that at left guard and helping the guy next to him and then kind of doing that in a combo deal? You also got Zach Martin there. Then it would kind of be a committee job. Um, it, it depends how how comfortable Solari is with pre snap communication and who he would want being able to being able to call things out pre snap. No, that's interesting. The whole scenario is, and and I know we know that Graham Barton does have some, but to your point, the fact that when he plays center, you see how much he's talking, how communicative yeah. he is, how how much command he has, and so it would be different if he was just going to play that guard. And I know the fan base would be pissed if if you didn't have a tackle, but you got one of the best ones in the NFL right yeah. now, technically. And so it's like, I, that's an interesting You have one of the best guards in the league, too, yeah, right? Yeah, I think you also got one of the best guards in the league. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. So uh, interesting scenario. it would be an interesting scenario. I will say, I know, Brian, you brought up last week when we were talking about, uh, or maybe it was earlier this week when you were talking about center, and that you know some of those guys that are later, you yeah. don't really have much of an upgrade. I think Bo Limmer fires off the ball better I than like it. Tyler I like Biotis what you're saying. I, I like think, what you're saying. I think his, his attitude and also, too, I think 
think his anchor is yeah. stronger than uh, what Tyler Biotish's was because that was one of the biggest things is that you just you couldn't see him get to the second level and control blocks. But then also, too, he just was like losing it at, like initially on the snap. So I wouldn't mind a Bo Limmer either if you're going to go in those later rounds. So yeah, yeah. if they drafted Bo Limmer, then they would be replacing Tyler Biotish with a native of Tyler, Texas. So let's go Bo Limmer. Let's, you need let's bring him in. Let's bring him in. You need help. He knows way too much. He does. He it's, it's way. It's, but you sick. know what? You know what? In, in day three, we're going to be damn glad we got him here. I'm so excited. He's yeah, like, like, my the, time to shine. Yeah, this kid from Roswell, Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This comes from Ben Dunn. Ben Dunn asks, which. That sounds fake. No, it, it, it's, it's a real Twitter guy. He's, got a, he's got a ben nice picture. Dunn. Ben Dunn. He's got a nice I've Twitter picture. Yeah, I've been done. He asks, which draft prospect not on the Cowboys 30 visit list would you want to see the Cowboys draft in the first two rounds that also fills a positional need? Oh, this is a fascinating one. Mm, I'm going to let you go first, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, going through, I'm going through the list right now. Um, Zach Frazier. Yeah. Zach Frazier would be an interesting one um, if he's there at 56. Uh, or if you're trading back into the early second round, that wouldn't be a bad guy to pick in the 30s. So Zach Frazier. That's the first name that came to, to came to my mind. Was, really? It was Zach, Zach Fra Frazier. Yeah, yeah. Zach Frazier. I, I I am like I've got this this center thing in my head that I can't. Once it once the first round gets passed, I've got to kind of figure out like okay, now what am I do the rest of the draft? I got to try. Yeah, and, you yeah, do got I do have a center. Do have I have a center, center block. I guess is what I'm doing here. You do got a problem a little bit. But. Uh, yeah, um, I think that I think that that Frazier would would make a lot of sense for me. Uh, I mean, no, they've met with all the linebackers that I was even interested in. Um, I don't know. I, I, I it's gonna sound ridiculous, but I, and again, I don't think that they're gonna go corner. But I, if if a if a Keon Mitchell was there, or Quinion Mitchell was there, or one of those guys, or Cooper DeJean was there, or something, I don't know if I would just be super like no, 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 no about yeah. it yeah. because. Um, I think it is time to replenish that corner room. Yeah. I think I really do think it is. I mean, with the loss um, of Stefan Gilmore, which is going to be huge or whatever the case may be, uh, after Trayvon Diggs and uh, Deron Bland, I mean, you're – you're sitting up here, and then a guy like Cooper Dejean, he has that yeah. flex, so you might be yeah. looking for a nickel for next, even next year. Right. So, yeah, I, I think, honestly enough, we, we haven't talked about corner a whole bunch, but you've mentioned how much you think corner is going to be important at the top of this draft. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. I like that. You know what's unfortunate? There was like a, a late day two, early day three corner that I was I was kind of pounding the table for early on here in this draft show cycle, and it was Kyrie uh, Kyrie Jackson out of Oregon. I love that I player. Love I, I, I've loved him the entire process, and then I just saw a mock earlier this week that had him going at thirty two, and I yeah. was like, "Well, no. damn, <laughs> people people are figuring it out. That yeah, guy's got he, him he's out got some sure. length, and he can yeah. cover, and he's sticky." I can. Aisha, this one's for you. Mm. This comes from uh, Shannon Washington. Asked this question. If Brock Bowers were to fall to us within reach, are we taking him along with Ferguson? The tight end from Georgia, Brock Bowers. <laughs> look, 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 look. I think I, because he can do so much, and you're talking about, in fairness, you're talking about you need like an extension of your backfield from like the running back position. He's not a running back. He can do some running back things out the backfield and stuff like that. I don't, I don't know. I I struggle with taking a tight end that, take taking a tight end that early. But somebody's gonna grab him and he's gonna piss us off every year when we <laughs> see him. Um, uh, you guys have a first on him? Yeah. yeah. If he's slipping to twenty four and he's there at twenty four, then just I'm just I'm it. gonna force a team to overpay and come up and jump. Or up. that's that's yeah. that's what I was getting at more yeah. so because it's like as much as I would love him on the team. What, how much is he gonna help? And also, too, do we have the step respectfully? No, yeah. do we have the guys that are gonna be willing to help him do the things he does best because he can do so many different right. things? Like, I don't want a guy to come in here that can did a whole bunch of college and then he comes in and he's just like a one trick pony. He's not. So, I would try, I would, I would, I would uh, hold him hostage for ransom, uh, and, <laughs> and figure something out at that point. All right. Last question here before we uh, we wrap this up. Eric Broxton. I think I got that right. <laughs> Eric Broxton says, NFL draft gurus keep predicting splash players like Xavier Worthy and Anadai Mitchell at 24, which makes no sense to me. Do you get the feeling that this might happen? 
Run that back again. <laughs> he's saying that the, he he's he can't understand why all the draft gurus are predicting that the Cowboys are going to take Xavier Worthy or Enadai Mitchell at twenty four. He says this makes no sense to me. Yeah. Do you get the feeling that this might happen? No, I don't feel like this will happen. Yeah, I don't feel like it will. I I feel like the only receiver. They might take at 24. And when I say might, I'm taking it with a very much a grain of salt, 5%, Brian Thomas Jr. And that's if he's there. But I, other than that, I don't feel like there's there's a there's going to be a guy kind of swinging there at 24 for yeah. a receiver. I don't know. Um, I mean, to your point, like, I know that there's like a lot of receivers that, that we think are going to be there early in their second round or whatever the case may be. But if it's a guy that they really like, I just don't. If, if somebody that is a star falls – I, I think that they might do it. Like, I know it sounds ridiculous. I swear, I didn't think they would take C.D. Lamb when they did, but if that's the best player on the board, it's the best player on the board. Yeah. Well, you guys did good today. <laughs> <laughs> um, where is uh, where's Malachi Corley on y'all's board? A second? Second round. Uh, yeah, I do. I, I had a third on him, but I'd be okay with taking him in the second. Yeah. That's where I'm at with him. Yeah. I mean. How's your boards coming along, by the way? Oh, pray for me. Yeah. It's going to be a long weekend. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Putting these things together, man. I, I think I've got 215 players on my board, and I'm at yeah. 142 on the stack. Yeah. yeah. So I'm working on it. Yeah. I'm working on it. It's hard. Well, look forward to working with you guys tonight. Absolutely. Again, we got Draft 101 at the star. It'll be on DallasCowboys.com. It'll also be on 105.3 The Fan. Those will be streaming on both. Uh, it should be a really fun, uh, entertaining night for everybody answering questions uh, for my guys, for my scouts. For Nick Harris, Aisha Morrison, and for Chris Beam in the Way back. Way to drive the bus today, Brian. Yeah, thank you. Go. Appreciate you guys. And I always, as I always do, I want to thank Ed Cahill for coming up with the idea about the draft show, Derek Eagleton, and the Jones family for allowing us to do that. Uh, we will see you uh, starting next week, every day leading up to the draft. So check your listings for that. And uh, keep scouting, keep working on it, and, and we're going to keep investigating and educating as we do here on the draft show. You guys have a great evening. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?